Well, hello there. This is a surprise to get anything after the sky we had today. I woke up to clouds. It was cloudy all day long and then we had some nasty storms roll through this afternoon. But it was so strange, uh, a few hours back, it all cleared off and we got some cool pictures of the moon and the daytime sky over by that willow tree. I'll probably put those pictures in here. But anyway, here we are on a Thursday, July 11th, 2019. It's now 9.31 p.m. up here in Northeastern Ohio. Let's get our setup done here. We have the moon in the south and I don't see any sign of Jupiter yet and Alrighty, there we go. We have a 78% moon up there. Well, 77.5%. <laughs> I tell you, it is humid. My glasses are fogged up. Now I can't see. <laughs> oh my. Oops. Sorry about that. I had the display on the whole time. Alright, um, let's go in further and Take a look there. It's coming in pretty good for what I'm sure is a, a lot of moisture in my atmosphere. But I do like looking at the shapes of the craters down here. So we'll just take a stroll around. Well, that's interesting. It must be uh, a part of the moon, I'm guessing. I'll, I'll circle it in the uh, video. But it's off in the uh, darkened part. Anyway. That's such a cool area there. The way those uh, <laughs> rocks look like they're strewn around. It's the area I call the boneyard. All right, cool. Our light beam area is coming out pretty well. Boy, it looks like there's a <laughs> green algae up there tonight. Oh, you know what that is? <laughs> it's the willow tree branches. Oh my gosh. It's already moved. Uh, I'm going to have to move the tripod and redo this setup. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Oh my goodness. <laughs> my willow tree is up on the moon. Okay, there we go. We got the alignment to straighten that. Okay, I just want to get some footage of the full-on view so I can try to stack some images in the Linkios program. I think that's how you pronounce it. I don't know. All right, that should be enough. Oh, you know what? I know why I can't see Jupiter because uh, I have to move us. It's behind that uh, tree to the left of the moon. So... <laughs> okay there's a general area of where Saturn should be down there in the cove of the tree 
in the lower left hand corner and then of course we can see Jupiter on the screen here up above that one branch well the ISO is so high we might as well go up and do this well I have to do another alignment first Alrighty, there we go. Alright, we have Callisto out there on the lead. And I forget the position of the other three. But as we see, there's two in the front and two in the back of uh, Jupiter. And that's a good enough look there. We're going to change things up and try to get the bands in. Just a minute. Oh, it's a shame it's not coming in well because it appears the great red spots in view tonight in the lower left. But we will try to stack some of the video footage here and in that program and see if it comes in better I can't get the knack yet of how to uh, process the image as well as a lot of other folks do there's wavelets and all kinds of stuff adjustments you can make to uh, bring the clarity and colors out And so far, it's frustrating me because I, well, I don't know what I'm doing, number one. <laughs> but that should be good enough there. There we go. That was a lightning bug. Oh, there's Saturn. It's above that tree branch. Cool. Cool. We'll have to check and see what the star is up above it. Okay, there's our watery buddy there. <laughs> so we have Saturn above that tree in the uh, southeast. Jupiter's higher up in the south southeast and the moon's in the south. And I know some folks wonder why I just get these few planets and, and the moon and stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't have the greatest of views here. I live in the city with a lot of light pollution and it's hard to see anything in my sky. And then there's always the fact I have a lot of trees obstructing my view. <laughs> and the equipment I have is uh, just some consumer grade stuff that that doesn't have the greatest low light capabilities and it's not a telescope but hey it's something I can operate and and enjoy and you know what over the years I try to film every day if I can winter is a problem but you never know what you're gonna catch I mean there's a lot of stuff zipping around up there <laughs> and I've had a lot of comments of uh, folks wanting me to get Venus and Mars and Mercury and all that, but but Venus has mostly been in the daytime sky and I think it's going to be many, many months, maybe in the winter, before it'll be uh, in the nighttime sky and high enough for me to be able to get it. And the same thing with Mars, it's been in the daytime. Either way, I have a really hard time getting anything that's setting over in the, uh, in the west, even the southwest, because of houses and trees and all that. So they have to be pretty high up for me to be able to film them after the sun goes down. And as I scan the sky right now, I only see two lights up there, Jupiter and the moon. <laughs> and that's what it's like from my backyard. Anyway, that's going to do it. And I'll try to cut this down into something reasonable. Um, okay, it's now 9.50 p.m. Up here in northeastern Ohio. Wishing you all a great night and a 
good Friday ahead. Weekend's coming. <laughs> All right now. Bye.